Muslim family. Now, they were not very practicing, but when I went to their home, I saw things in their house. And the mother actually was uh, Syrian, and the father was American. And the two daughters, they were very casual. They didn't really practice their religion, but still, there was something there. It was the first time I'd actually met a Muslim, even though non-practicing. The first time I'd ever actually met a Muslim. And that started to shake some of the brainwashing, because the brainwashing that the church gives is that you know all Muslims are evil and terrorists and crazy and stuff like that. So this exposure, getting to meet these people who were not crazy, who were not mean, who were very welcoming and kind, and heck, they liked Star Trek like I did, so it had to be, they had to be kind of cool. And then after that, um, I got a job. I was working with a guy who said he was Muslim. Now later I discovered he was a member of um, a nationalistic movement in the United States called the Nation of Islam. And Nation of Islam was not actually not actually uh, Muslim because of a lot of a lot of things that they have incorporated in the beliefs. And maybe I can go into that in another show. I can talk about some of the offshoots from Islam that are that are problematic. But I saw the way that he conducted himself. Very respectable. Very good children. Children were very disciplined. Again, still, didn't really take Islam as a possibility at all. So that was that was twice that God had sent a little just a little introduction. So one day when I had my car worked on in the States, I just went walking and I walked for several miles and I found a used bookstore that I'd never been in before. And I went inside and inside there was a big copy of the Holy Quran. And it really got me thinking. I realized that that was the only holy book from any religion in the world that I had not yet read. I'd read all the rest of them. Every other holy book from every religion I'd already read, consumed. Some of them I got rid of. Some of them I kept because they were kind of interesting. But I'd never read the Quran. So I said, okay, I'll buy this. It was only $8. Turns out this, is a, this was an original copy of the 1936 translation by Abdullah Yusuf Ali. And um, it's, it's a wonderful copy. I still have it. But when I got it, I took it to work with me to this guy who said he was Muslim. And I said, I bought this the other day, and I know you're Muslim. I'd like to really get into it, but before I really start, it's kind of confusing. And he leans over to me and says, this is not for white people. So <laughs> there it was again. I got three signs, and then somebody shut the door. I said, okay. So I put it on my bookshelf and never, never opened it. Still, Shaitan was putting this block in front of my face. Shaitan was keeping me from grabbing hold of the truth of Islam. Several years later, um, I think, I think I was 22 at this point, my mother began having some very interesting dreams. Uh, she would see the face of an Arab man, and then later she would, she received literature about missionary work that had this Arab man's face in the literature. And it was to a country called Tunisia. Mom was like, it was Tunisia. So she looked it up. Oh, okay. Tunisia is on is in northern Africa, just south of France, and it's a Muslim country. Okay. Well, my mom is still very much Christian, very much involved in. Christian thought and writing about uh, Christian ideology, and uh, she actually wrote a book that was self-published called The E Pluribus Unum Connection, which is uh, a study of uh, Christian morality in the in the United States government uh, political and legal system, and how it works hand in hand. And she decided that the dreams must be sending her to talk to the people in Tunisia 
about Christianity. She's supposed to go and convert the Muslims in Tunisia to Christianity. She thinks, I can't do this. This is crazy. She keeps having the dreams. The dreams keep bothering her. And finally, she says, okay. So she starts studying and reading this. She has to figure out what it is that Muslims believe so she can talk to them about Christianity. So she came to me and she said, do you still have that copy of the Quran you bought years ago? I said, sure. There it is. Have it. So she read it. She studied it. She got more information on Islam, read it, studied it. This is a woman that went to church for almost every Sunday of her life from the early 1950s until the, until the 1980s. Um, this is a woman who was very, very devout in her belief. And as she read the Quran, she realized that this is true. My father as well, they were studying it together. This is, this is what we've always believed, but wasn't being taught in the church. It's everything that we believe as Christians without all the junk, the contradictions, the, the greed, the craziness. I said, well, oh, okay. I'll have to take a better look at this. Well, my mom insisted that she's not going to Tunisia. She's not going to this crazy country that she's never been to with all these people. And so she has a dream where she's being chased around her bed by a big whale. And the whale scribbled on the side of it in graffiti and said, Jonah was here. So she's chased around in her dream by this whale. And she says, okay, okay, I get the point, I get the point. And then, as I said before, my mother is an artist. She received this vision in her dream of a piece of art that she was supposed to paint. And so she began to paint it, little by little. She began preparing this artwork, and it was a mosque, and it was the moon, and it was a lamp, and from the lamp was a flame, and from the flame was a rainbow, and at the end of the rainbow was a star and it was symbolizing a soul that, that gains new life through the purity of its life. And finally, finally, Mom acquiesced. She said, okay, I'm going to Tunisia. They made their trip. They made their plans. This was in spring, early, late spring, early summer of 1999. And they went to Tunisia. And it turned out that the mosque that was in her painting, the mosque that she saw in her dream, was the Okba Mosque in Karwan. So when they went to the Okba Mosque, they talked to the Imam, they showed the painting. And there's there's a whole lot to their story that I'm not telling because it would take a long, long time because they really had the adventure. Because when they went to Tunisia, they didn't know anyone. They had no idea who they would meet, who they would talk to, what they would say, nothing. So, after all this time, they went to talk to the imam, and the imam didn't want to hear him, didn't want to hear him. And then she showed the painting, and immediately he understood what was going on. So my mother and father went to the front of the Okba Mosque, when it was time for Maghrib prayers, and they made their shahada. And at that point, they became Muslim. They believed it for a while, but at that point, they really embraced Islam wholeheartedly. Very excited. So, after this whole crazy trip. I called it a crazy trip at the time. I thought my parents were both out of their mind. So, I started studying. And, um, right now it's time for a station break, so we'll finish up after we're back. <laughs>